Well, hello everyone and welcome to this live stream where I'm delighted to be joined by Sam Spurs, also known as Sam Wall, who <laughs> is the founder and director of a newish company called Talent Heads, which are in-house recruitment strategists. Hi Sam, how are you doing? I'm well, thanks. Yeah, thanks Paul for letting us join you today. Oh, you're welcome. So, like I say, a lot of people will know you probably uh, more as Sam Wall, but you recently got married, didn't you? Yeah, we had a COVID wedding. <laughs> yeah, we, we had four different versions of one plan that none of them actually went, that the final version was none of the, the, four, the four previous ones. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, just because, like, everything, you know, it's really difficult to plan for anything, but um, particularly a wedding, but no. Delighted, and I know from conversations how happy you are. So congratulations again for for all that and for getting through it, and and for launching the business as well. Because um, am I right? I think it you're really sort of pushing it now. But it, it has been you did set up the company during lockdown as well, didn't you? So yeah, I did. I did. I started during lockdown, um, but I, I had kind of a version beforehand as well, which did something very similar. Mm -hmm. um, but this is kind of my 100% business. The last one was was had different contributions in it. So Talent Heads is solely owned by myself. So I can push it forward in the strategic direction I want to. Um, but it, it has got some momentum. It's been going for maybe a couple of years now um, as what the kind of services stand for. So I've had a good opportunity to work with a different array of clients and trying the methodology out with a number of different people. So it has it has got some history there as well. Yeah. Okay. So, well, we're, we're going to talk about how to find talent to grow your business. Uh, that, that's what this is all about. But just so people know a bit more about you and your background. So before being the founder and director of Talent Heads, you had another company called Seal Talent Partners, which is doing it, doing a similar, similar mm -hmm. thing to what you do now. Um, you've also been involved in a in another company organization called Just Northeast People. And before that as well, you were Head of talent, is that right, for Park Dean Resorts? Talent acquisition. So I was fully responsible for their full strategic recruitment plan um, for a number of years. And that business grew and grew. It started off quite small, quite humble, and then it merged overnight and it just literally went. It was one of the it's one of the Northeast's big success stories. I was delighted to be part of that business. It was great. Yeah. So how how long were you at Park Dean for? About five years. But honestly, Paul, the changes that I saw in that one business over those five years meant I don't think you could have really, I couldn't definitely have got as much exposure within that time frame. Could have literally yeah. just grown at a rate of knots. Um, and I joined it at the perfect time to get all the exposure. Yeah. So it's, it's exciting when you when you join a company, when when you can create something kind of brand new, and then you can, that that's um, a key key reason for their, their growth, obviously. And um yeah, the experience that you get from from working with a small company and helping it grow into a, into a large company. And I noticed during the summer, they were one of the few companies that seemed to be on a big recruitment drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've never known them not to be. I mean, I, I suppose they, they'll have gone, obviously I can't speak for them because I don't work for them anymore, but um, I suppose they'll have gone through challenges like every other business and had to pivot and make decisions and all that sort of stuff. But I think they're just a successful business that's built on the right foundations and I think they're just pushing forward um love it love what it stands for I, you know I, I love the product itself you know the days of creating memories and stuff when you've got families and things it's perfect to be involved in something like that yeah cool so tell us about your business and tell us about talent heads and mm -hmm. what it is that you're doing yeah so talent heads is a bit different to your traditional recruitment company and um, we are strategic um, recruiters. So basically, it's pretty much what I did when I worked in house as, as the head of recruitment, um, hence the, the, the name Talent Heads is Head of Talent, um, which was what my previous role was. Um, and we work in a couple of different ways of businesses to support them in that growth stage and that scaling stage. So it's smaller business, businesses predominantly, it's northeast businesses predominantly and it's about getting them to the next stage through people and recruiting in the best way but with a long time with a long-term vision in mind 
Um, so we work in two ways. It's, it's kind of a, a project perspective. So it's they might need some work on their brand, how to stand out, what are their competitors doing, what's their values stand for, and really getting them out there in the market and shouting from rooftops in the best possible way to support their brand. Um, or also kind of doing things like initiatives on future talent. So it could be graduate programs, apprenticeship programs, intern, or it could actually be a nice meaty project where it's a senior recruit that you're looking for, a senior hire, which is going to be highly influential in the business and you want a company to support you as your brand and go out there and give the best candidate journey possible so you can get that person engaged in the business that they're going to start in. Mm -hmm. um, and the second thing that we do, Paul, is we work on a retained basis as the in-house recruitment team on behalf of multiple businesses. Mm -hmm. So it might be that they don't want to employ a, a recruitment professional um, on a full-term basis or a, um, on, a, yeah, on a permanent contract, they might just need it in the short term, but they might just need it one day a week or two days a week. And what we go in is we help them, as well as put a strategy in place, actually find the individuals, onboard them and retain them, because that's the important piece. It's not just about putting a bum on a seat, it's about getting the right person in with the right behaviours, values, you know, match the ethos of the business, and they stay and they perform. And that's what we're all about. Yeah, brilliant, because, yeah, it's not just putting a job ad out there and and, and trying and trying to recruit someone um, because like you say if, if um you need them to to stay within the company because if they leave then that's very expensive to have to go out and and fill that fill that space again so um so it's much more like you say it's more strategic more long term thinking on um so so why why did you want to do it this way and, and what what cuz from your experience as someone who's a head of talent um, trying to do that job in-house, but also working with recruitment agencies or seeing how they operate. Like, what, what for the uninitiated, what, what, what's the difference? I think recruitment agencies serve their purpose, and I know some brilliant recruitment agency owners, um, some fabulous entrepreneurs who who do that really well. I think what I'm trying to do is offer a different service where. The bit that I like is I, I'm an entrepreneur. I think, you know, you band around entrepreneurs when you work in a corporate and you kind of, you, you, you've got a spark and you're looking for it and you're always trying to push forward and you're coming up with loads of ideas. And the bit that gets me is I, I love, working with business owners who share that entrepreneur spirit and I, and I want to I get my energy from other people and people find their energy from other people in different ways but where I think I add my value and where I come alive is when I sit next to another entrepreneur who knows what they're doing but just doesn't know how to recruit or get the individuals that they're looking for and that's where I, I want to be the, the way that yeah like I say what I'd value is by sitting at that main table with those brilliant genius people who are just really looking to push forward and for me the traditional recruitment bit is that you kind of stand back a little bit it's quite transactional I mean it is quite consultative in some recruitment companies but for me I want to be absorbed in the business I want to know everything about it I want to be able to speak to candidates I'm speaking as the head of talent acquisition for Park Dean Resorts and working with their brand so it's about the difference is it's, it's being submerged in it and dedicating the time to really understand that business. So you add in value again, like I say, in the long term, not just the short term, not just filling a role and then moving on to another business. It's yeah. about, right, where are your gaps? What's your issues? Why are people leaving? You know, why are you struggling? What your competitors doing? It's all that kind of really great stuff that really gets smaller businesses really thinking and thinking, right, actually, my, em my employer brand really goes hand in hand with my service and my products brand. I need to do it properly. And that's where we can add some value. Yeah, no, I love it. I know that when we first met and um, in, the, in the previous company that you, that you were running, I, I just loved the, the, the way you were approaching it because it is that kind of middle way because it's either you're either trying to do it all yourself in-house or you're working with a recruitment agency, but you're, you're that middle way, which I, th I think is actually the, the smartest way of the, of the two because there's a lot of companies, if they don't have a profile, they don't have a good brand or they're not well-known and they're like trying to get everyone to come to their website and they don't have a following or, or they're not known. Um, and then you've got the recruitment agencies who a lot of people just don't like working with recruitment agencies. Either the job seekers don't like going to them or a lot of employees will say, no recruit, no agencies, please. So it's yeah, what you're doing is you, you are really like living their brand and kind of representing them and, and getting really under the skin of what that, that company is all about and what, what they're trying to do. 
So yeah, I love it. So it's about it's about the belonging to them. So when they pay for a service, it belongs to them. You buy a car, it belongs to you. It's it's like that. It's it's with us. By the days that you want us to work for you, and whatever we work within that, whatever we do within those time scales belongs to you. So if we do an initiative on refer a friend, if we look at your your website and and say you know you need to be shouting a little bit more about this, we need to write adverts in this way. Or your job descriptions might be more beneficial if you look at it this way that belongs to them so that they're left with something that's tangible that they can go actually that's great it might have helped us recruit x but it should be able to help us recruit all these other roles in the future as well so it's like you're leaving something with them and you can see that business grow and you've left a little bit there where you know they can use that to to push their business forward and it's that kind of pride piece be about being associated with watching other, other people do well and, and progress and that's a bit that i enjoy yeah so um you mentioned a little bit about the kind of type of people that you like working with or, may, or maybe the type of companies but do you have a certain type of company in mind or a stage of company in mind is it is it people who or companies that they, they know that they're going to be accelerating their growth in the in the coming months or, or years and you kind of ideally get in there and work alongside them as soon as possible so you can be part of that journey rather than it's like later on where it's maybe a bit too late is it, yeah that, yeah, I think I think my idea would be to to get in with this that is just in its infancy. So mm -hmm. has a couple of years under its belt, knows that it's wants to recruit people now, they're ready to recruit, they've got the investment, they want to be able to then partner with someone and then getting in, like you say, understand and absorb myself in the business and grow with it and on a long term basis. I think that's my ideal. I mean, at the moment we're doing a couple of videos with um some some great guys and, and one of the things that we've been banding around is things like um you wouldn't try as a business owner to try and do your own accounts or you, you wouldn't try and be your own legal representative. And actually recruitment's just the same. You don't want to dabble in recruitment if you haven't got that skill set. You do need to kind of acquire that expertise to come in just like the other services that you do, which I think is really interesting. Yeah. Um I think when you get up to that kind of 80, 90, 100 team members, headcount, that's when you probably need to start looking at, do I need an internal resource myself? And we can definitely go in and set up KPIs and metrics and, you know, kind of put the foundations there to, to start building a recruitment team, absolutely no problem at all. But I think it's that kind of sub 80 headcount where there's probably no HR, if, if there is maybe just one individual and there's definitely no recruiter. And that's when we come in, it's not kind of not kind of looking for a babysitting role just to plug a gap it's more about really you know what you're paying for you're getting some service on the back of it you're getting some added value that you can take in the future of your business yeah okay and so what's what are the common mistakes that people make in, in trying to find talent <laughs> I think there's a there's a there's a good few over the years I've uh, I've learned, um, but there's things like um, people just expecting there to be a gem sitting at the other side waiting for their advert and not mm. thinking that they need much work for it. It's just like I'll write an advert and I'll put it out there and I'll get a response, mm -hmm. and and that's like it, it, people just don't go bing and they're there. It, it's, it's about putting the work into it and actually understanding do, do these people exist or the real or the skill sets that I'm looking for. Actually, what's my proposition to them and what will make them engaged and get them on board? If I'm looking for the very best person, I need to do a bit of work myself to be able to attract that person in. So, I think it's. Um, definitely a pitfall about people just assuming that I'll put an advert on a job board and I'll get a response and then it'll all be hunky-dory and then I'll get a candidate at the end of it yeah yeah I think that's um kind of the importance of like the, the brand building piece isn't it as well of like being being visible um in in different ways and, and going kind of where the people are rather than expecting them to come come to you because I definitely see that where companies may, maybe just list a job on their website yeah people aren't hanging out on their website all all the time are they and especially if they don't have a large following so and it's it's not just recruitment it's it's other um a lot of new business owners or even established business owners that i'm speaking to who are, who are like struggling to grow and um, i'm saying to them tap into existing networks like go where the audience already is rather than it's it's a lot harder to try and build your own audience from 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 scratch than it is to to tap into something that's already there so have you got any suggestions on that but apart from obviously working working with yourself town heads like where how, I how, think, how would you become visible to a, to a job seeker yeah i think there's a strategy that needs to be done i don't think that you can kind of just 
try and dabble in stuff and, and you know give your website a shot and then give a job board a shot and then maybe give social media a shot I think you really need to sit down and have a look at holistically about right where are my audience and how do I engage with them through different channels yeah. so I think social media presence is a huge thing um I think you know having a and again, these are things that you need to commit to. So you can't just kind of go, oh, I'll give it a shot. I'll put it, I'll put an Instagram feed out there and I'll tell people what it's like to work here and that'll engage people. It will do that, but you need to do it on a regular basis. Yeah. So there's things like that. There's also this networking, you know, let's go now. And if you've got any, if you're in a real niche, go out and do some presentations, share your knowledge, get people to know what your business is about by very discreetly telling them that you are professionals and leaders in that field. So mm -hmm. do not speaking you know definitely join up like you say with other people who have got that audience sewed up and like offering your services out there so just talk to as many people as you can about how brilliant your brand is and what you do um but i think what's important as well is before you do that is really doing the work to be able to understand what you're trying to articulate because there's no point in going out there and just flustering and then losing the opportunity because you've just said whatever you think you should have said at that time and in that place it's again about looking at that strategy and saying right what do what do people who what do the people that want to work here what we want to work here what do they want what they're looking for what 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 are we about what can we offer you know what are our competitors doing all that sort of stuff and having that strategy so when you use whatever channels you choose to use you're using them and you, and it's hard hitting it, it reaches the audience quite quickly and people understand straight away what it is that you're about and, and what opportunities you might have available for them mm -hmm. okay is um I don't know if you want to like say this or not, but is there anyone in particular that you think's doing it well in the in the northeast or the UK that, that, that you've seen? You know, I, if I'm honest, that doesn't sound like I'm sitting on the fence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think that it depends on the sectors. So I think we've got front runners in different sectors who have got it all kind of um so I know I'm doing a bit of work with a client at the moment and doing some research on some of their competitors and there's some brilliant, brilliant investments in time and different channels that they're using. Um, you know, quite innovative, you know, brand, use of brand and colours and really knowing the audience that they're going after. So I don't want to give any names. Um, I'll uh -huh. sit on the fence, Paul. But uh -huh. yeah, there were some great examples in the Northeast. And, you know, I think tech businesses are doing really well i'll put my hat on that one i think they're very innovative usually when it comes to what they can offer from services and from products and they tend to be when they're pointing in the right direction they're really good at selling themselves and talking to people really about why they love the tech that they're associated with so there's some great brands out in the northeast yeah okay i'm gonna make it easy for you i'm, I'm gonna get i'm gonna give a suggestion who's not in the northeast so i'm, I'm gonna say so free agent who are based in mm -hmm. i think well they're a really great company anyway and like the the customers love them they've won loads of awards and stuff so the, so the product is really good but they're they're also very good at showing behind the scenes like i think on the instagram and and um it's like life at free agent so they're, they're very good at showing behind the scenes and it just every time you look at it even just the imagery that they use in their in their marketing to potential customers is very friendly and um they really understand their their, their target audience for the for the product but the um that translates into the behind the scenes as well it just looks like a a friendly fun nice place to work and i've been to the office as well the office is is amazing and the people are everyone i've met a free agent is a is a really lovely cool person as well so yeah there's definitely um some people do it well and then others kind of maybe just assume that people are going to want to work for them just because just because they're a big company and they're and they're well known without without putting that kind of effort into it. Yeah, that's what I like about working with smaller businesses as well. You know, because you can go right down to the the with a big corporate and some businesses. It's it's very much, especially a global corporate as well. It's quite difficult to sometimes put that regionality on it to make it feel like you could be one of them. Because as a candidate, you just want to basically be able to say, "Do I want there? Can I see myself sitting in that backdrop of?" Of those people who work in that business do i want to be one of those people that's yeah. what you're looking for so i think with smaller businesses it's really good because you've really got the opportunity to be really creative and i definitely know from personal experience setting up businesses the most engagement of all the posts that we put out was when we were talking about who we were as individuals because people are nosy people want to see how they can relate to you they want to be able to say right actually i quite like her because she does this she's got something similar to me and her hobbies or definitely the engagement piece comes from the I can relate. I can relate to that business. I've got similar values. I understand where they're going. I want to be on that ride with them. 
Yeah, especially if it's a smallish team, you know, because you yeah, you want to think, oh, could I could I work with that person, or would I like to be in the same office? And I know it's a bit different now because it because of COVID, so people aren't necessarily in offices. So that leads on nicely. Like, how has how has COVID affected mm-hmm. things? Um, obviously massively, but in terms of how to how to get on the radar of job seekers and also mm-hmm. what job seekers are looking for, how that might have changed? Yeah, it, it has massively changed. I think for businesses before COVID, it was all about, it was a candidate-led market. So the candidates could choose which businesses they wanted to work for. So the really good ones, you would have to, they would stay put where they were and you would really have to shine to try and get someone out of a business or to try and get their application over someone else. So there was a lot to do on brand. Um, so the candidate really like had the opportunity then to choose the businesses that they wanted to work for. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, because there is some brilliant candidates now that are on the market that actually businesses might not have got the opportunity to say. So there is a positive and the negative. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, there is a higher volume of candidates out there looking for work. So from a business perspective, like for example, I've been supporting someone with a senior role for their business. And, and I knew we were going to be inundated with candidates. It's a good role, a brilliant company based in Gosforth. You know, they're going places. They're really, really, um, really kind of on that journey of, of doing something really, really, really super. Um, so I decided I'd only put it out for a week. Historically, you'd put it out for a couple of weeks, but you would get so many applications in that time. You've just got to be careful that every single person that's applying for the role, you need to be giving them a response to manage your brand. You've got to do it properly. Mm-hmm. So for that example, we put it out for a week, we got 60 applications, and I've got to say, nearly, maybe 45% of them were really great candidates. Mm-hmm. And some of the candidates were actually overqualified and were looking for the side step, which is not usually, people are usually looking for the next step. Now, the market's a little bit more fluid. Candidates will look at, right, actually, what does this mean for me? I'm looking for some stability. This business has got some growth plans. Maybe I can sidestep, mm-hmm. go into it, and then grow again. Yeah. So that's really changing the the environment or the the, the, the recruiting um, kind of perspective from any kind of business. You need to be aware that when you go out there, you've got to have the capacity to be able to deal with it. And candidates are quite vulnerable and, they, and the individuals that you should they expect and they, and they should expect some kind of engagement, some kind of thank you for every, like every application that comes through. Yeah. Um, I, know that, I noticed, I think you put, put something on LinkedIn the other day about this, um, about you know, people do deserve a response, even if... Yeah, because I, I know a lot of the time I see people saying they were getting frustrated that they didn't get any, mm. any response at all and they just like left there wondering what, what happened. And it's not that they weren't good applicants. It's just, I say just, but the, maybe the employer, uh, the recruiter has been so busy that they thought, oh, well, it's it's not important or they've, or they've just not got capacity to, to go back to them and, and respond to them. But that's something that you would you would help them with isn't it to, to make sure that everybody gets some response because it might not be right that time but they might be right the next the next time that's exactly it paul i, I think people forget that that one recruitment drive actually can make an exception on how they feel about that brand for the long term yeah. so yeah i think all job seekers where that they have got there's a lot of people up against them in the job market at the moment but they're all individuals and they all expect or well, they should they should get uh, just a thank you but just just be aware of this so even an acknowledgement is enough for some candidates just to be appreciated that yeah we know it's tough at the moment unfortunately there's candidates who are a little bit stronger based on these criteria good luck please keep watching our websites for other opportunities because yeah. then you get your followers you create your brand actually it's an opportunity to do some of the strategic stuff while you've got a campaign out there running yeah. um sometimes businesses are just not looking at that from a kind of a holistic perspective of actually what does this mean if we don't do it right yeah. and, I, and i also do believe from a personal perspective that people remember when times are tough and people help them out and mm-hmm. i think that's what we need to be doing we need to be helping one another out when times are tough for everyone yeah well that's i mean you kind of alluded to it there but it's it's a good opportunity isn't it to, to get them to still stay in yeah. touch engage so you can say oh well you know sign up to a newsletter or follow us on on twitter or subscribe to our youtube channel or like our facebook page you know just the, the, don't get the job doesn't mean that they can't still be yeah. kind of part of your ecosystem and, and informed of what, what you're doing so when when something else comes up they can they're one of the first to hear about it yeah 
And I think from a candidate perspective, to kind of answer the second part of your question, I think my, my recommendations there would be to, to do your research and make sure that the roles that you're applying for, the roles that you really want, because I think what what is important is that when anyone sees your application, they can see how you're relevant and it can you can tell that by your application in your CV. So I would just say if you want to if you see an advert, you think, yeah, they're perfect for me. You do your research, just double check they are perfect for you and then tailor your CV. And make sure that the hiring manager, when they receive it, they can say, yep, she's got that or he's got that. And they can literally tick through and go, yeah, that person needs to be seen for an interview. Don't just put a generic CV out there, because if you do, then you are running the risk that you might be just the volume of people just show people that you've actually really done your research and you know what it is that you're applying for yeah so on a more practical level like um do you think covid has changed the, the, the actual nature of the role so you know when people used to t when people used to talk about flexible working mm -hmm. um, now i think people are expecting like completely flexible like not just being able to work from home because pretty much everybody's working from home it's, um, unless you're working in manufacturing or engineering or something like that, um, but not necessarily being set hours. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you seeing any changes there, do you think? Or do you think that's going to be a, a new trend? So instead of saying your your hours will be Monday to Friday, 9 till 5, it might be more task-based where it's just like... Uh, this is the work these are the, these are the the responsibilities and kind of a, as long as you get through this work it doesn't matter when you work whether you work mornings afternoons evenings weekends whatever to fit around your your responsibility do you think that's something that's going to happen potentially it could i think what it definitely working from home has highlighted to lots of businesses who might not have looked at this in like in before this had happened it's definitely that people do get the work done at home so really, does it really matter what time the clock does say, as long as it does get done? I think there's a really good case for all businesses now to say between that Monday and the Friday, if that's business operating hours, these are the objectives that you need to achieve. And I'm going to leave you to them just to, to achieve the objectives. And yeah. if that box comes back with a big tick and yes, it was it was done, there's definitely a case there to be able to say, just either manage projects or manage what you need to be done in your own time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think there is, I think, to be honest, all the clients that I am working with at the moment, you know, there is, they, everyone is still thinking, you know, what is the new norm? And I don't think for some businesses, you know, working from home all the time is going to be something that they want to do. They'll dip in and dip out. There could be this flexibility there, definitely. But I do think that some businesses are looking forward to being present in the space again and just sharing that knowledge and being able to bat ideas off in individuals face to face. So I think it's all kind of depending on the business. Yeah, I watched something um, the other day about there was a, there was a guy um, talking about hot officing. So you know, like hot, you know, like hot hot desking. So it was hot office, like hot office, where you people will work from home most of the time, but then maybe once a week or once every couple of weeks they'll all come together in, in the office into that like um, when they have to have these group meetings or um, they, they need to do some sort of innovative collaborative. Uh, kick off or something like that and then they'll go off again so that that's that's the first time i've heard that phrase but hot office seems to be a, a that's interesting because one of the one of the businesses that i'm currently working with they're talking about you know people come in they, they've got an office in sunderland and they're also looking at talent in leeds and manchester area because they're saying some of the time they can obviously be working from home and just checking in and that kind of objective list these are the things i need you to fulfill this week but then they could come up once in a while, once a week, like what you said there, once a week, maybe two days a week, if there was something important that they needed to be present for. So it's actually bringing people in from all over the place to be able to work in one office as well, because it means that actually they're not tied 24 seven to that one office. Yeah. So that is, it, it's interesting, it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out when the doors open again and you know, offices potentially do open and, and then see what happens then. Yeah, yeah, I was talking to someone else as well the other day from a, from a big, um, sort of digital agency and they were talking about how when as soon as they can reopen they're probably going to have people working diagonally so so that nobody's directly opposite diagonally but doing shifts so like half the team can come in in the morning or, or like early day and then the other half can come in later in the day or in the evening if they, if they want to just to because to, to, um, the office at the minute was already quite cramped as it as so they just Try how, how to keep um, space it out a bit more. So yeah, every, everybody's thinking of these new ways, yeah. of, new ways of doing it. No one really knows. They're just kind of figuring it out as it as it going along. But I think people 
do are missing getting together you know definitely it's, uh, i am I'm, I'm missing getting together i think as soon as i can get the opportunity to just go even just one day a week and be out with clients and stuff it's not yeah. the same when you're kind of taking a brief over a zoom call you want to feel it you want to be part of it you want to see what the buzz of the office is like you want to see what the star performers look like you just want to you just want to absorb some of that atmosphere and you do kind of lose that a little bit being stuck in your in your house <laughs> yeah it's that, it's that human energy in it like i mean this is this is great like talk, talking to you i always love talking to you anyway uh even, like even on zoom is like great but it's still not the same as meeting in person the energy that you that you get and when you you're vibing off each other and you're, you're bouncing ideas and then definitely the, one of the things i've really missed is um just those random serendipitous conversations or you'll overhear <laughs> And do, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I do. Because unless things are in a diary, unless they're pre-scheduled for for a meeting, you're missing out on all that all, all that other stuff that, that you would have had um, in an office environment, or particularly where I was in like an open plan co-working space. Um, so yeah, the, the sooner we get back to that, the better. Definitely, but I do think it is an opportunity though for businesses to to look at you know if they have struggled with talent in the in the past. And they can work a bit differently to attract the right individuals then they've got the opportunity because this is a proven experiment to say we can work in a different way so yeah. businesses can be a bit more creative if they have struggled um and i do think that that does open up a bit of an opportunity for you doesn't have to someone doesn't have to live within 30 miles of the office as an example okay um so this this is something is that like um We've talked before about like regional differences as well, because I know you're really passionate about the the northeast, and um, you were anyway. And then and then during the the lockdown, you were involved in in the just northeast people. Um, what what do you think the challenges of the of the northeast region were, or do you think they're still the same, or as it's not doesn't matter so much now because you can get people from anywhere. <laughs> You have got more opportunity to get people from outside the region because of what we've just talked about there. So I think that is a positive or there's an opportunity. Um, I think still we do have skill sets in the Northeast that we just haven't got as many individuals as we'd like in them. And I do think that, again, when we go back to strategy, it is about kind of planning for the long term rather than just pinching off Peter to pay Paul. That's a great thing because you're Paul Paul. But you know what I mean? It's like we have got still a shortage of, you know, some of, Developers, for example, are a perfect example where you know they've doing their rounds, um, and I don't think the current climate in COVID has really changed that. I think that's still the way that it is, um, and yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think time will tell. Again, you know, every time we get put into lockdown, this being the second lockdown, I think a new lot of challenges come up, and and then people re definitely reflect again, don't they? The first lockdown we went into, everyone reflected. They were like, right, on my services and products, right for the my supply chain. Who do I need to work for? What the costs look like? What do my clients need? And then we're going to the second lockdown again. It's all over again. It's about review again. Like, can we get into next year? What does the first quarter of 2021 look like? Um, so I suppose. For the region do you know we've always been a very and I'm, I'm i'm speaking very general here but i am a northeast person so i do think i've got an opinion on that but we are a very sociable bunch and we are very much about helping each other and sharing our networks and you know if you're not the expert making a recommendation or making a referral and i do think the northeast you know from my perspective i have missed that i have missed being able to kind of go out there and share and grow other people's businesses just by being on the stand on the, on the sidelines um so I think the Northeast, in my personal opinion, out of all of the country, we probably are missing a little bit of that kind of that inspirational event thing, that kind of like, yeah, being, and, and also from a business perspective, it's quite difficult to find some of your audience when actually some of your audience would be on the ground, there would be in the universities and you'd go into universities and you would do a keynote speaking piece there, or you would go into a one of your events, Paul, and I, that would be a great forum to be able to talk about what some of their services and products are, and that could be the audience for them to start talking about their brand. Yeah. Stuff like that in the Northeast, I do think we have missed. I definitely have missed that bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, well you know, like what one of the one of the many aims of the Startup Week event was to shine a light on some of the great companies that we already had here. So there was a, a talent retention angle to the event as well as a talent attraction because there's definitely lots of people who who – don't realize what great companies you've already got here on the doorstep and they, and they maybe feel like they have to move away 
sweet and stable, but particularly young younger people might think there's not room for for them here, so they have to have to move away. But then, if they see these great companies speaking at events like mine and, and others, they're like, "Well, wow, bloody hell! I didn't I didn't realize that was here." Um, I remember years ago, um, there's, a, there's a big company over in the northwest who um, the company itself they're not very well known, but their brands are really well known. Mm -hmm. And, and they, even though it was a massive company, really successful, they were struggling to attract talent. Um, and people just assumed that they were from London, just yeah. because they're such a huge company and such a huge brand. So so they they had to spend more time going in, delivering talks, like get, getting involved at the at a sort of grassroots ground level, going into the universities so that they, they weren't just trying to um, get the, 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 the students in the final year. They were getting on the radar in the first year or the second year because by the time they're in the third year a lot of them have already got jobs lined up so yeah get, getting in as early as possible yeah absolutely i think as well you know covid as well anyone who's based in the northeast and this is a bit of a this is just my perspective on it is now that we've been around our families a little bit more you might not want to go away and travel as much i yeah. definitely know that the northeast community even though i don't see the northeast community as much as i want to i definitely know that what the last kind of six eight months has done for me is is make sure that my life stay in the northeast i don't want to go anywhere else because yeah. it's that kind of security and we're all looking for a little bit of security one way shape or form at the moment with what's going on with covid so i do think from that skills retention piece I would like to think that because the potentially businesses could now start looking at work and partners, there could be able to look at a project basis rather than just a day to day. I need you to sit at your desk and just move paper around or whatever it is. But actually, there might be more opportunities in the northeast for people to stay around the doors, and they might just people might just choose that actually that's what their priority is right now is to stay around where they are around their loved ones rather than going up and down on the train to London or up into Scotland or whatever it might be. Yeah. Definitely, I've spoken to a lot of people who, like, they've, yeah, they've gone back home to the to their families, like to be closer to their their parents or their or their brothers and sisters or their elderly elderly older relatives, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and like London, I haven't been down to London uh, th this year, but yeah, it sounds like a bit of a ghost town, you know, because people have left the capital, you know, they've gone back to where they're from because there's not. There's not so many people who are originally from London. A lot of people have come from the regions, they've gone down there or another country and they've all gone back to, mm -hmm. yeah, to where their strongest family ties are and their friends are. And like mm -hmm. you say, they're now working there and questioning why they need to be yeah. in, in the capital when, when they could do the same work in the region. So I know it's, it, seems, it is tough at the minute, but it, the Northeast could actually benefit from from this situation with people are realizing they can work from anywhere. They don't need to be in, um, down, in, down in London or, or other major cities. I totally agree with you. Absolutely. Yeah. It's an opportunity. Yeah. Have you, I think we've talked about this before, but um, you know, the phrase boomerangs. So, so people who yes. are maybe originally from the, the Northeast and then they've mm -hmm. moved away, they've, they've built a career, they've, they've um, been successful elsewhere and then they've decided to come back to the region so this was even before I, mean, I noticed there was definitely more and more boomerangs like really amazing talented people coming back to the region and it was either um they either just had some affinity to the to the area because they'd studied here you know they'd been to university and loved it or typically that they, they were their partner was from here yes so like they got married to someone um or they were just they were gonna have they were having kids and they wanted to raise the kids up here or or a relative was was sadly ill or or, or something had happened and they they were coming back so have you have you noticed that like before lockdown had you seen much of that i think i think yeah definitely people would follow the, the smoke wouldn't they that's what people would say you know even the recruitment field that's what people would say you'd have a few years and you see be in your regional area and then you would go and like like Oliver Twist go down get your fame and fortune down in London and then you would come back ultimately for the exact same reasons what you've just said there you're going to have a family and you need your network back you need your support network to look after your children while you're still working things so I do definitely think boomerangs are a thing I think they were pre-COVID I would I, I would probably assume that that was 
that's probably happened like even more with COVID because people will want to come back and be around if they've got elderly parents and things up here still come back that they're okay I do think that kind of sense of community has always been a big thing in the northeast as well so not even just community within the business field it's, it's within the communities that we live in as well so I would imagine that boomerangs would have will have come back if there was any intention to come back and look after your family and stuff they will and definitely it will benefit local businesses who are looking yeah. for the skill sets in the region yeah. um so, yeah. yeah so now now is the time really to, to raise your profile and make sure if, if those people are here mm -hmm. that, they know, that they know that you exist and that you've got opportunities because because they're looking they are looking for it you know they, they want to the ones i'm thinking of now there's probably about 10 in the last few months that I've met and they all want to contribute they all want to be part of the success of the the continued success of the of the region and it's not that they they've been they've come back and been impressed with what they've seen already and they want to they just want to be part of that so. honestly Paul I can't tell you when I was doing that when I was doing that senior recruitment piece for for one of the clients that I work for and um, mm. the quality of the individuals that were on that short list was so high like it, it, there's some amazing people who are looking for work at the moment who are out there. And yeah, I think from a business perspective, you've just got to try and go out there and articulate your message so clearly that they know exactly why they need to put an application in for you. And then if they're not, if they, if for some reason someone else has got something else that you, appeals to you more than that, you need to be able to manage these people because like you say, you might need them in the future. And these people are coming up and they're having very high level conversation. And it's that kind of, cross pollination of everyone talking about different brands and, and sharing all that information and stuff so yeah definitely it's it's a brilliant time to recruit right now um if you do it properly yeah so um i mean i have some random thoughts on this i mean I like I, so i was thinking i think i might mention this to you so I, I thought a while ago maybe you should set up a dating agency right to get people back in, because if they are coming back to, for their partners like uh. You can find single people <laughs> from the northeast and match them up with talented people from elsewhere. I know that does happen anyway, you know, but like if, if there was a specific, if that was part of the recruitment process, because, uh, you know, if, if people fall in love and, they're, they're, you know, they're going to come. <laughs> oh, you can't deal with matters of the heart. I'm not sure. I can I can deal with a job description. I can deal with creating a gap in skill set, but matters of the heart is a different thing altogether, Paul. <laughs> You, you can come and join talent heads and set the date inside i'll stick with the job side <laughs> yeah, spin off for, for talent heads yeah um <laughs> and then the, the other thing i was thinking like advertising in maybe mother and baby magazines or something or wedding magazines what what for what job. do you mean for job because because if people because if people are if people are thinking of getting married Oh, they're thinking of like, without a partner though paul if someone's buying wedding magazines and they haven't got a partner yet it's almost like those people who go and try on wedding dresses <laughs> no but if, if, someone, if someone's you know if someone's gonna have a baby and they're thinking uh -huh. about well, like, maybe that's a good time to advertise northeast jobs in in mother and baby magazines um, <laughs> no, no. leave that on with us let us think it through i mean to be honest actually that's a that's a whole new um conversation that we could have then around um people changing careers once they return to work for whatever reason and there's definitely a market for that and i and i love hearing about success stories where people have had a major milestone in their in their lives like have a baby start a family you know have a few years off and looking after a family or doing whatever looking after an elderly parent or something like that and then deciding to change direction of their career you know yeah. take on a new a new skill um and i've heard of lots of northeast space based businesses who are really up for that kind of investment in helping people change direction and acquire yeah. a new skill set and welcome them back into the world of work in a different direction but that's a different conversation but i love that one that's that's yeah. great yeah i mean like it's a bit tongue in cheek what i'm saying but it is it's like major life events you know when mm -hmm, it is when you question you know, like, okay what what is it that i actually want now mm -hmm. with this this change and um you do especially if people take a break whether that's a forced break or or a chosen break to have kids or or, or whatever then um yeah that's that's a good time how do you how do you get on their radar at, at yeah that? 
Yeah. Oh, I totally know what you're saying. I think just as soon as you say wedding magazines and stuff, I just go, oh, weddings. Best day of my life. Yeah. But the hardest thing I've ever had to plan in my life. So, uh, yeah. I know what you mean. I think there's this is there is something quite empowering about being in that position where a lot of people are in right now, where unfortunately they find themselves reflecting and deciding, you know, right, what do I really want to do now? That decision might have been taken out of my hands. I might have just stayed in the same job for the next 10 years, but actually I've got a choice now. What do I want to do? And I think there is something quite empowering as an individual if you get that stop. Instead of being on that hamster wheel, I always talk about being on a hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. And when that hamster wheel stops, you get the opportunity to go, actually, do I still want to be a hamster? You, yeah. you know, and <laughs> if it hadn't stopped, you would have just kept going. And now yeah. it's the opportunity for you just to really like, think, right, things have changed. Everyone, every single person has been affected by change, one way, shape, or form. Lots more people are open minded. How can yeah. I how can I play that in my strengths? What do I do? How do I take a hold of this with both hands and run with it? Yeah. You know, you remember Brad Burton, you know, the motivational speaker? Yes. Yeah. Yes. He he's he's uh, watched him speak a few times this year. He's, he did some talks for the Starter Week event on the online one we did earlier this year. And he he talks about what does this make possible? Like even when it's a bad thing that happens, he's like, think, change, change it around. Think, okay, what what does this make possible? Because yeah, you might have never done something otherwise. You might just carry on as you were. But when when something's taken away from you, or or, or something changes, whether that's um, unexpectedly, like yeah, it it can actually give you a bit more space to to try try something new. So yeah, it's I think. Uh -huh. right. It almost it almost forces you into doing that. Mm -hmm. It almost forces you into really reflecting and thinking. Actually, you know, I need it. I can be selfish now. That's stopped. I need to be able to think. Right, what do I want to do with that? Mm -hmm. And and yeah, I totally I totally believe that. And and even pre COVID, all of that it, people have got to that point in their careers as well, where it's just like actually, it's just stopped. And now is my time to be able to take control of what I want to go with for the rest of my potential career. Yeah, yeah. So if anyone is watching this and they're actually looking for a job now, like what what would you advise them? Like how to make themselves I know you've mentioned a little bit like to make themselves more visible or or more employable. Like what what quick easy things could they maybe do or um what skills or experience or, or would you say people are looking for now? Is is anything new that, that people are looking for? You no, know, I, I don't know if there's anything that people are anything new that people are looking for, but I think that I would my tip to anyone who's looking for work right now is to maximize the time that you when you are looking. So, you know, to keep yourself motivated and stuff, learn, you know, get on to seminars. You know, there's some free, brilliant resources out there. I've jumped on them myself and I lack a little bit of what's my purpose, where am I going? Because everyone gets those times of crisis of confidence. Get yourself on a training course, get yourself on something that's new, open your mind and experience it because you might not get the opportunity again while you're job searching, so just do it now. Yeah. Um, and I think people do like to hear that you've kept yourself busy. I mean, there's nothing better than when you hear that someone's jumped on and helped the local charity out or done something because they've got a bit of extra time now. And on your CV, that does make you stand out because it looks like you're a team player and you're part of a community. So if you can do that, that would be brilliant. So I would say learn, get involved in something else, keep yourself busy while you're applying for roles. And definitely when you are applying for roles, just do the research, make sure you're not just applying for every single thing and don't just put a generic CV in. Like I said, as soon as you do that, you just become one of the mass. What you want to do is really elevate yourself to the next level by showing that you understand what that business is all about and you know how you match it. Mm -hmm. um, so opening statements, CV, um, your cover letters for your CVs, just make sure you are literally talking to that business. You're not just talking to a job, you're talking to the business. Yeah. So you've yes, yeah, so you've done your homework. So you, you know a little bit of yeah, you know a bit more about them and kind of. So I mean, I suppose as well, like a company's website and their social media profiles, they're kind of leaving clues on there, like even like yeah. breadcrumbs, like a trail of breadcrumbs of like all the things that they're up to and all the things that they're interested in. So it's easier now than ever before to find out what what the company's interested in and, and what they're working on. Um, so if you're not looking at that, then then you're doing yourself a, a disservice. Like it's you, you'll stand out if you if you if you know a bit more. Not only in the um, maybe the covering letter, um, 
but in the interview as well you know if you if you've done that yeah yeah um also like things like linkedin as well you'll be able to find people people are easy to be reached so actually you can find out who's recruiting the role and do a bit of research on them for the interview so that's a really good tip as well about being prepared that if you do get selected for an interview who you're going to talk to yeah. know what they've done and what your experience how that how that kind of um compares to their experience level because they should have a profile on linkedin and things yeah. so people are accessible and the northeast's always been accessible so there's no reason really for you not to have done your research it's you can't there's no excuse um and and i think yeah you know you could always reach out positively and say can we connect i've seen you've got a job that you're working on you've got you've got on the moment i've put my application in you know just kind of stand out be a bit more proactive be assertive um yeah, that sort of stuff will definitely help. Great, cool. Um, so I, there's, I just noticed there's a comment there from Haley. Haley Ram. She's just said, oh. "Thank you." I don't know if you know Haley or not, but she's. I just, love Haley. Yeah, she trained oh. me. She's fabulous. All right. Well, oh, she just said thank you. Um, I don't know if you can see that as well, but yeah, she's just got to go now. But she's just saying she's she's really enjoyed uh, listening to to what we've been saying. So um, yeah, what. Obviously, you want if companies need some help with their with their recruitment to get in touch with you. So, what's the best way to get in touch? Um, there's a couple of different ways. There's the website. Um, you can there's a di direct link there where you can get in touch with me directly. Um, yeah. LinkedIn as well. Um, Sam Spurs. You can get in touch with me via there, or you can just drop me a line at sam at talentheads.co.uk. Okay. Um, I'm I'm around. A lot so you'll be hopefully you'll be able to see us <laughs> one yeah. way so, so talent talentheads.co.uk is the website and um it's it's businesses that you want to get in touch with you but if if a job seeker like is there anything that you can yeah. do with workers, or or would you just encourage them to uh, job you seekers. Your, yeah yeah. my relationship with job seekers is very much the, the businesses that i support is their internal recruitment team if they're looking for individuals i'll put it out on my social media channels as well and then they'll go into the journey of yeah. that business that's recruiting and usually deal with me on that yeah. so it is worth having a look you know follow like connected on linkedin because you will see the clients that i'm working with their opportunities out there yeah. um also like our facebook page we've set our facebook page up purely just to support individuals rather than businesses okay. so that's a lot of hints and tips on how to, how to stand out you know how to engage with traditional recruitment agencies all of that sort of stuff and um, we've got a facebook page that is just for you guys who are looking for work and just trying to give you hints and tips and things like employability there's lots of people who reach out to me and just say can you have a look at your cv can you help us with this can you help us with that i'll do anything that i possibly can do to help i know what the current climate's like i was affected at the very beginning of covid i'll do anything to try and help anyone so if there's anything that i can help anyone with just reach out and ask and if i can't um give you the advice i'll signpost you to someone who might be able to help you instead but yeah we don't tend to hold vacancies like what i said at the very beginning like like traditional agencies traditional agencies will get roll upon roll upon roll whereas we'll be working in a business as their brand so you won't see some more so much of us you'll see the brand of the clients that we're working with instead yeah. but we will pass it out on our social media channels okay brilliant so yeah definitely encourage people to to follow you well check out the website follow on all your social media profiles and you as well yeah your own uh, on, on LinkedIn in particular. Um, okay, cool. Uh, is there anything else that you want to encourage people to do or one, one last thing that you need to say? Or? I, would, I would just say that this is temporary. I think this is what I tell myself every single day, this is temporary. Um, there is an opportunity out there. So for businesses who are looking to engage with talent, there's an opportunity out there. Like I said, there's loads of brilliant people who are looking for work at the moment. Just engage with them correctly and make yourself stand out. And from a candidate perspective, I would say there is opportunities. There's businesses still recruiting. There's businesses that have pivoted, that have changed, that have updated their services, who are still going the same direction, they're going in the way that not. So don't be disheartened, but um, use the opportunity to learn and develop and stuff because you might not get the opportunity again that's that's my ten a penny okay. love it okay thank you right we'll, we'll end it there then so thanks again sam for doing that and uh, i'll share all the links underneath here as well and we'll we'll, we'll get this video out as, as far wide as we can so so lot, everyone can hear about town heads and uh, get get you involved in their in their in-house recruitment okay all right thanks, sam. thanks paul thanks thank you. bye thank you bye